I'm John Bishop and you're watching The Red Men TV. So there you go, breaking news. Liverpool have officially confirmed the signing for 32 and a half million ish. Uh, Christian Benteke from Aston Villa put an end to another of this summer's somewhat protracted transfer sagas and basically making you wonder that if we were going to meet the asking price, why we didn't just do it a month ago. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, well, look, the big man signs on the dotted line. Uh, we, we talked about this when we we did the video about the, the fee being agreed or, or whatever, or Liverpool choosing to match the fee, and we saw a lot of the comments. Uh, apparently, Liverpool uh, had the money for Ferrari and chose to buy a van, which was one of the funniest comments I think I've ever read about anything. Ever, um, I do disagree. I, I, I do. You know, anyone who's who's seen that the the Reddit thread posted by the Aston Villa fan, he goes to great lengths to basically say, um, he's not that shit, <laughs> uh, and he has got a lot of a lot more to his game than people give him credit for. And I've seen a lot of this talk about how he, he thrives on crosses, and I, I just think that's a little easy. I think you know, I think yeah, he will do. He's a big man, of course. He's going to thrive on crosses, but. I think he's got more to his game than that. I think he can link up play a bit better. He's got better feet and he's got better pace than I think we um, a lot of people seem to think. But what's telling about this? I know we've seen from a couple of preseason games now, and I'm it's settled my nerves a little bit more on it. Is how many crosses Liverpool have been putting into the box in preseason, and again only preseason. So you know you can't make absolute determinations on what Liverpool's style of play is going to be. I think it's interesting that in the first game Ricky Lambert started, and I felt Ricky Lambert was taken on the tour mainly to, to make up the numbers in some extent. Because I do think he'll, I do think he'll move, you know, sadly because I, I do like Ricky Lambert. But I, I feel like as a, as a place card, I've taken someone who can actually who, who's taken a big man so that he can play similar style away, I guess. Like, but you know, look, we we've been crossing the ball into the box. We've been trying our best to do that. And people said that what didn't fit Liverpool's style, well, you know, we're starting to see that perhaps Liverpool will adapt the style and modify it. doesn't just mean smashing the ball 60, 70 yards or whatever down the pitch. It means working the ball into areas that are far more dangerous. It's all well and good, you know, playing nice ticky tack of football on the edge of the box, but sometimes getting your full back overlapping or getting Jordan Ibe into a one on one position against the, against the uh, full back, getting them to beat it and getting them to put, put the ball into the box. Nothing wrong with that. And if you've actually got someone in the box who can capitalise on that, that's boss. That's not Liverpool throwing their, their, their approach or ethos out the window. That's just smart. That's just having different ways of playing football. And Liverpool were very, very one-dimensional at times last season. We lacked that spark of brilliance. And you can't replicate what Luis Suarez brought to Liverpool. You can replicate elements of it. You can rep you can replicate the work rate and the pressing, which I've seen loads of in, in pre-season, which was missing Big time because let's face it, Mario Balotelli does not do that. Ricky Lambert doesn't have the legs to do that. Um, but you know uh, he, what Luis Suarez brought was just being able to do loads and loads of different things. Now, yes, he, he's a brilliant. He's a one-off. He's a, one of the genuine best players ever to play football. So what you need to do instead is just have a variety of players to suit a variety of needs. And we didn't. We tried that last summer, but didn't get it. And you look at Liverpool's potential striking options in. Christian Benteke, Divock Origi, Danny Ings, and hopefully Daniel Sturridge from when he comes back. You've got a lot of different ways of doing things, and that's just your strikers. That's not taking into account, you know, your Jordan Ibes, Lazar Markovic, uh, James Milner, Jordan Henderson, Philip Coutinho, Firmino, etc., etc., who are all going to do different things behind them as well. So I, I, I think there's, there's definitely a, a feeling of being a bit underwhelmed by Christian Benteke and I do get that because you know it's not he's not Karen Benzema but I would just contend that at 24 years old with a more or less one and two uh, goal scoring record in the Premier League you could do a damn sight worse ultimately if he was playing for look at like I, I said this on, on the subscription if he was playing for Hoffenheim like for me now, if he was playing in, if he was playing in Spain or he was playing in Germany, everyone would be looking at him. Look, people go mad about Chiro Immobile for 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 Dortmund. I think Benteke is better than him. You know, maybe that's just my opinion, but you know, whatever, man, that it's my show. Um, so you know, I, I think that if you really look at it, and you really look at it cold and hard, and you, and you try to strip away this this kind of like EA sports sort of mentality that it's got to, you've got to be amazing at FIFA to be an amazing player then uh, I think Christian Benteke could be an amazing sign for Liverpool probably slightly too much money but you know when you consider Boney moving through in the 30 million bracket you know you consider Lukaku what? 
Darren, Be- Darren Bent moved for twenty four million pounds to Aston Villa like what five years ago. Lukaku moving for twenty eight million. I think Ben Teke is an all round better player than Lukaku, so it is a little bit too much money, but it's nowhere near the ludicrous over the top money that some people would have you believe. Anyway, ultimately it's down to him to prove it. Now he's a Liverpool player. If you don't, if you're not convinced by it, great, that's fine. Have your opinion in the comments below, but then leave it at that. Let him play his footy. Let him prove you right or prove you wrong. And I just hope that the vast majority of people who who who, who aren't convinced by it or seem to think it's the worst thing Liverpool have ever done can take a fucking chill pill and let the guy play his footy and, and hope, because you should be hoping, if you're a proper Liverpool fan, you should be hoping and praying that you're wrong about him. Because if you're not, then what are you doing supporting Liverpool Football Club or any football club, to be perfectly honest? Get a grip. Anyway, thanks very much for watching. We'll be discussing this and a hell of a lot more on RMTV Question Time on the RedmenTV.com. Go and check that out. Ben Teke in loads more detail with the uh, with a couch full of guests as well. It's completely free for a month. Check it out. Uh, I'll annotate that at the end of the video. 60 minute show. It's boss. Get on it. Give the video a thumbs up. All your thoughts on Christian Ben Teke in the comment section below. Uh, and cheer up. If Shana Saker scores goals, that's a good thing. ta -da. OK, welcome to Melwood. We've got two fantastic Liverpool players here taking on the 1v1 Keep Your Battle with the great leveller of footballers, the flyaway football. Can they transfer their skills to the schoolyard classic? Who's going to come out on top? Let's find out. Go for it, boys.